Hi everyone and welcome to today's Drama Hospital Recap. As always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos or recaps. And thank you everyone for the happy birthday wishes. I really, really appreciate it. And let's get to today's recap. So at Sunny's, Carly is worried about how to keep Avery and Sunny says he has a plan to make Ava think Avery wouldn't be safe with her. And Carly tells no, Sunny tells Carly, see, off to a good start, uh, what happened with Christina, and Sunny's mostly mad about the professor that turned Christina in and made this, like, a public issue instead of just, like, keeping it, you know, private, um, so Carly urges him not to dig in anymore because he could make it worse, and then... Uh, Carly gets a call from the Metro Court that the health inspector is there and she needs to like get there right now and Sunny calls Max and wants him to look into the college situation more. Not not gonna turn out well for anyone. <laughs> At the hospital Ava admits to Julian that she thought poor Paul Hornsby was a crook and now her associates think she betrayed them and Julian says she's a dead woman walking. So, uh, she tells Julian she had no choice, and Paul has the recording of her admitting to killing Connie, and also tells him that Paul isn't going to help her in any way, or give her any protection, or anything like that, and he tells her, uh, she's not going to survive on her own, which, um, yeah. I mean, he's right. <laughs> uh, so Ava thinks that, you know, this is, um the deal she made with God playing out to take her and save Kiki, but Julian isn't going to let anything happen to her, and he says that he's going to go to a meeting on Ava's behalf to try to help her out. So just when you think they're, you're out, they pull you back in. Uh, back at Sunny's, Ava shows up at Sunny's house. More on that later. At Crimson, Dylan's at PCU seeing the papers being distributed by airplane. And Nina's worried and Maxie gives her a pep talk, but she's also, like, secretly worried too. So Nina's going to see a specialist to see if she can have her own baby and she thinks Franco's on board. <laughs> yeah, she didn't get the, the newest memo. Although there's been a lot of memos going around. You can't blame her. You know, she needs a memo board. Uh, so Maxie tells her that their contest is trending uh, on the internet, mainly probably Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> so the scavenger hunt is working and Maxie still doesn't totally believe the printer and Nina thinks that Julian uh, is behind the crimson sabotage. So Maxie doesn't think it's Julian and they move on from the idea and I'm sitting here like, no, because uh, they don't see how Julian would benefit from crimson failing and they really wouldn't have access to that um, information unless they have like Spinelli hack in to see if there's anything, you know, going on. Who knows? That might happen. Uh, so there's a knock on the door and it's the Department of Health telling them to evacuate. At the Metro Court, Valerie arrives for her and Curtis's date, but he wants to kind of change plans around a bit and wants to play the thousand dollar crimson scavenger hunt, which just sounds like so much fun. I would totally do that. Um, so Curtis brings up a saying his mother said before she passed, um, that if you can't, change plans how can you change your life was that it I'm, I'm getting no feedback it's What's something like that <laughs> um and Valerie kind of um kind of sees Curtis in like a different light um and she tells him how her mother passed before her life kind of went off the rails and she probably wouldn't have gone down the path she did if her mother was still alive it just got really bright in here one second so they decide to do the contest. Uh, so Carly arrives at the Metro Court and the health department is shutting them down. And the offices can stay open though, that was a mistake. And Nina tells Carly that the mayor may have had a hand in this because there's an Olivia half owner and doesn't her trial start today? Uh, so then um, back at Crimson, Maxie and Nina like kind of now like maybe we're like oh maybe the mayor is the one behind the crimson sabotage but again they don't see how she benefits so they're kind of off that and then curtis and valerie come in with the completed magazine and they they bonded they're a little scuffed up mostly valerie like i she lost the shoe and i feel like she did the most like work in that <laughs> from what they were saying um but it was really nice to see her like they're they're giving her another side they're giving her her like you know we get to see who Valerie is you know and I'm I'm, I'm really happy for her I like that uh at Julexis's house Molly asks Christina when she's going to tell her parents the rest of the story again really bright in here but I can't turn the sun off so we're just gonna have to deal um and Christina tells Molly a little about Parker and then like Molly's like oh well you've only gone out with like creepers and like bad guys um and Kiefer gets brought up and 
Um, Christina says something about him not being evil, but, like, I watched the show during the whole Kiefer thing. I I'm sorry. I'm not on board with that. He used to beat her. Like, no. I'm, I am, no. Not about that. Uh, so Christina's questioning everything about herself, and she feels like it's different when it's you and you have to, like, tell your own parents that, you know, maybe your parents are, like, you know, supportive of other people and everything, you know, um, but when it's you, so she's, she's, you know, she's just very, uh, it's, it's, it's rough, you know? Um, so Molly stays supportive and she's talking about how sexuality and gender are fluid and she brings up other sexualities that people may not have heard of and are, um, different artists that like, you know, don't conform or their sexuality or gender is fluid. And, you know, it's a really great conversation. I have to say, I was very surprised. Like it, it was really awesome to see that on daytime TV. I'm not going to lie. Well, it's great to see it on any time on TV, but I'm just, uh, it made me really happy. Um, and Molly wants Christina to to talk to her about Parker and uh, Christina does and like her face lights up and it's 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 nice for her you know um, at the courthouse Alexis gives some short remarks remarks to the reporters and uh, Diane is representing the city didn't see that coming did we well probably because I mean big you know a big uh, case Diane's gonna be there I guess we should have saw it coming so She's saying that it's a frivolous lawsuit and Lomax wants them to drop the lawsuit. So Diane plans to play this as a First Amendment case and Alexis is playing it as an abuse of power case. And, um, where was I? Uh, oh, and the mayor threatens that if they don't drop the case, they'll regret the day they went up against her. And Diane is not thrilled that her client just said that. And I'm like, hey, when you're fighting an abuse of power case, it's best not to, like, give more ammunition, you know, like don't flaunt your abusing of your power, you know, uh, can't. So Olivia walks off and Alexis asks the mayor exactly what she would do if they don't drop the suit. And the mayor says she would talk with the bar association and I don't know, bring up how Alexis has kids by different mobsters and this, that, and the other thing. And the mayor walks over to Olivia, who very clearly has her phone out like this. I can't show you because my phone is recording this. Um, but, um, uh, so, uh, she said, you know, she's already pulled her business from the Metro court and the hotel, the hotel's bottom line would get better if the case is dropped. And then Diane realizes Olivia is taping the conversation and Diane tries to contest, um, t tries to tell Alexis that it's an illegal recording, but Alexis is like, there's an exception for public officials and like police officers, you know, the recording, like it's, you know, but I think in any case where they are, it's like a one, one party consent. And if Olivia knows she's being taped, so, um, I don't think it should be an issue anyway, but then, um, Diane tries to keep bringing up like different points. So she's obviously very upset that this whole thing has been being recorded. Um, so Lomax insists that Olivia give her the phone and Alexis is like, no. And you know, Olivia's like, no. And then Lomax grabs Olivia and like they fall and they're like in a, a whole rumble as it was said a brawl yeah so uh during the little brawl uh diane erases the recording and christina and molly tell alexis and olivia that they're heroes in the court of public opinion and diane personally this is how i feel diane shouldn't have to stoop to deleting the recordings so she definitely feels threatened by alexis and olivia's case you know, to, to do that, you know, uh, and that end scene, Ooh, we're already there. So Valerie and Curtis, uh, yeah, Valerie and Curtis won one of the thousand dollar prizes and Nina's going to get their money. Maxie's going to take their picture and she and Curtis had a lot of fun and it was really nice to see. Julian shows up at the courthouse and tells them that there was a hitch with the issue at Crimson. Oh, he needs a memo too. Someone give him a memo. And Lomax threatens Julian that she's going to put him under surveillance if Alexis doesn't drop the lawsuit. Again, stop abusing your power if you're being accused of abuse of power. I can't. <laughs> it just, I'm, ugh. So, uh, Carly tells Olivia that she needs to drop the lawsuit because the mayor sent a message with the health department. 
uh, which some people in this house are very upset about. I won't mention any names. And um, Ava tells Sunny that Avery uh, can stay with him because she underestimated how much time and care Kiki would need. And after Ava leaves, Sunny calls someone and thanks them for the assist with the black rose and the message. <laughs> so I was already uh, kind of suspicious about that earlier in this episode. So it just obviously confirmed any suspicions. So what do you think of that tactic? Because I... I I, I think it's a great tactic, personally, just strategically. Um, whether or not you agree with either or both of the parties or anything like that, just, you know, based on strategy. But anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. I will see you Monday for more German Hospital. I hope you have a great weekend. Bye!